This week has kicked off with quite the blast in the world of AI and specifically the world of AI in California. OpenAI has started off on Monday with their Spring Update event and then Google followed suit with their Google I.O. event on Tuesday where they spoke a lot about the new things coming to AI, specifically Gemini. In this video I'm only gonna be covering the first of the two events because there is already enough to talk about for at least 10 minutes. So let's kick things off and I'm gonna help myself with a little list of all the items that I need to cover because it is a lot. The biggest thing that's happened was GPT-40 being revealed and a couple of great information about this one. Well, the first one is that it has our favorite price, which is free. So very soon we should start seeing GPT-40 for free to all users. And even better is that GPT-40 is an enhancement over the already incredible GPT-4 model. So what we had to pay $20 a month for before now will be for free to everyone and it will come with all the different features that we already knew from the older model which is vision, browse, memory and data analysis. So we'll be able to use our camera or our screen to show GPT-40 what's going on, we'll be able to browse the internet as we could have in the past, we'll be able to use the memory which basically means that we can add context from previous conversations into our future ones so that chat GPT-40 actually learns who we are and knows better how to talk to us. Next one is data analysis, which means that you'll be able to show GPT your document or a file and it will be able to reason about it and talk to you about it and explain things within. Great. Another thing is that the response times have been drastically improved and this is actually a huge game changer because finally talking to ChatGPT 4.0 will actually be quite natural, where it's a naturally flowing conversation without all the different 5-10 second lags, it will just be a flowing discussion between yourself and a robot. Together with the release of the GPT-40 model, OpenAI has promised that they would be gradually releasing further software, such as an iPhone application, an iPad application, a Mac and PC application, which we'll also see a demo of in this video. And the last thing I wanted to tell you before we jump into those demos is that OpenAI has obviously given developers access to GPT-40 as well. And the great news is that it's going to be half the price of what it used to be to use GPT-4 Turbo and it will be twice as fast. The first video I'm going to be presenting you shows how much better GPT-40 is at showing emotions when speaking to a human being. So here goes. Hey, ChatGPT, I'm Mark. How are you? Oh, Mark, I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. How about you? So that is already a lot more emotion than we're used to. But in the next demo, which is going to be a bit longer than this one, um, we're going to see the developers at OpenAI actually interacting with ChatGPT 4.0 and asking it to change the way it intonates certain sentences. So have a look. So my friend uh, Barrett here, he's been having trouble sleeping lately. And uh, I want you to tell him a bedtime story about robots and love. A bedtime story about robots and love? I got you covered. Gather round, Barrett. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Byte. Byte was a curious robot, always like exploring. started this story, but I want a little bit more emotion in your voice, a little bit more drama. Got it. Let's add some drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named no, Byte. No, 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 ChatGPT. I really want maximal emotion, like maximal expressiveness, much more than you were doing before. Understood. Let's amplify the drama. Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Byte. Byte Actually, can was. Can you do this in a robotic voice now? Initiating dramatic robotic voice. <laughs> Once upon a time, in a world not too different from ours, there was a robot named Byte. So we've seen the guys give the model three different voices, and I'm sure that's only the tip of the iceberg of its capabilities. I'm kind of hoping that we can give GPT-40 a Borat voice at some point. That's kind of my dream. Yes, you match. I'm my name is Borat. I like you. Anyways, um, as a blooper, there's also a bit of singing that GPT-40 can do, 
And, well, you decide what you think about it. And so Byte found another robot friend. And they live circuitly ever after. I swear to God, if I hear that voice in my dreams, I'm suing OpenAI. This should not be legal. I don't care. Anyways, the next part of the presentation shows us how OpenAI's new model can interact with real-time video. So in this demonstration, we're going to see the guys giving ChatGPT a very simple equation to solve, and the model will help them reach the actual result. So, ChatGPT, what equation did I write down there? Ah, I see it now. You wrote down 3x plus 1 equals 4. Yep, Let's exactly. Work. So what's the first step I should take to try to solve this? The first step is to get all the terms with x on one side and the constants on the other side. So what do you think we should do with that plus 1? OK, I'm going to try to subtract 1 from both sides, and then I'll see what I get. Great idea. Perfect. Now, what do you get when you subtract 1 from both sides? OK, so ChatGPT, this is what I ended up with. How does this look? Spot on. Now you've isolated the term with x on one side, and it looks like 3x equal 3. What do you think we should do next to solve for x? I'm not sure. Can you give me another hint? Of course. You have 3x, and you want to find the value of x. Think about what operation would undo multiplication. Is it subtraction? Close, but think of the opposite of multiplication, because 3x means 3 times x. OK, I think it's division. Let me try to divide both sides by 3, and let me see what I get. Bingo! Go ahead and divide both sides by 3. OK, so ChatGPT, this is what I ended up with. How does this look? It looks perfect. You've solved it, and x equals 1. So that was a very simple maths problem, but I'm very curious to see if GPT-4.0 is actually going to be a bit better at mathematical problems, because if you've ever used GPT-4, 3.5, or any large language model for that matter, they are not the best at maths. So let's see if they've managed to improve their capabilities. And now comes the most interesting parts of the demonstration, at least to me, because we're going to see a live demo of the Mac application as it actually interfaces with the whole screen. So the guys will be basically sharing their screen with GPT-4.0 and the model will help them with whatever is happening on their screen. And that opens a lot of possibilities. Let's have a look at how they use it. Okay, so I'm going to open the ChatGPT desktop app like Mira was talking about before. Okay. And to give a bit of background on what's going on, so here we have um, a computer, and on the screen we have some code. And then the ChatGPT voice app is on the right. So ChatGPT will be able to hear me, but it can't see anything on the screen. So I'm going to highlight the code, command C it, and then that will send it to ChatGPT. And then I'm going to talk about the code to ChatGPT. Hey, ChatGPT. Hey there. How's it going? Yeah, it's going really well. I was wondering if you could help me with a coding problem today. Of course. I'd love to help you out. What's the coding problem you're dealing with? OK, I'm going to share with you some code. One second. Sure thing. Take your time. OK, so I just shared some code with you. Could you give me a really brief one-sentence description of what's going on in the code? This code fetches daily weather data for a specific location and time period, smooths the temperature data using a rolling average, annotates a significant weather event on the resulting plot, and then displays the plot with the average, minimum, and maximum temperatures over the year. Awesome. Thanks so much. And in the code, there's this function foo. Can you describe to me what the plot would look like if I had versus didn't have this function? Sure. The function foo xy takes in a data frame x containing temperature data and a window size y for calculating the rolling mean. It smooths the average temperature, minimum temperature, and maximum temperature columns by applying a rolling mean over the specified window. With the foo function, the plot would show smoother temperature lines because the rolling mean reduces the noise or fluctuations in the data. Awesome. This makes Thanks so much. So yeah, I definitely will want to apply this function. And so I'm going to uh, generate the plot and then show it to you. Give me one second. Absolutely. 
take your time. I'm excited to see the plot when you're ready. Yeah. So, so far, ChatGPT has only been able to see the code. And now I'm going to run it, and then I'll use the vision capabilities of the ChatGPT desktop app so it can actually see everything going on on the screen as well. OK, ChatGPT, I'm sharing with you the plot now. I'm wondering if you can give me a really brief one-sentence overview of what you see. The plot displays smoothed average, minimum, and maximum temperatures throughout 2018, with a notable annotation marking a big rainfall event in late September. So we've seen GPT-40 actually discussing the code that it sees on the screen and then talking about a diagram and answering different questions about it. But now imagine that actually GPT-40 has access to your screen whenever you allow it to. So it sees your calendar, it sees your notes, all that kind of information, and then puts it together and it helps you actually organize your life or at least your work. So I think that opens quite a lot of possibilities, although you're going to have to be careful not to share some private information with it. Another useful use case of the model, which we've already seen with previous versions of GPT-4, however, because GPT-4.0 is so much faster, it just makes more sense. The use case is translating conversations between two people speaking different languages. Perfecto. <laughs> Mark, io mi chiedo se le balene potessero parlare, cosa ci direbbero? Mike, she wonders if whales could talk, what would they tell us? Um, they might ask, uh, how do we solve linear equations? Potrebbero chiederci come risolviamo le equazioni limiari. <laughs> Sicuramente, sì. <laughs> Certainly, yes. So for comparison's sake, uh, in the old iteration of GPT-4, the way you would talk to the model, if you were using the voice option, would be that you would ask your question, and then your question would be transcribed to text, and then that text would be sent over to GPT-4, and then GPT-4 would answer, and the text would be then transcribed to actual voice, and that's what you would hear in the end. So it was a lot of steps on the way to actually delivering that response. In GPT-4.0, the model is actually interfacing directly with what you're saying or showing. So that's why it's now an omnimodal model. And that's why it's so much more interesting, really. And it opens so many more opportunities. And then the last demonstration is showing how GPT-4.0, having access to your camera, can determine your facial expression and how you're feeling, and then have a conversation with you about why you're feeling that way. It looks like you're feeling pretty happy and cheerful, with a big smile and maybe even a touch of excitement. Whatever's going on, it seems like you're in a great mood. Care to share the source of those good vibes? Yeah, no, uh, the reason I'm in a really good mood is because we were doing a presentation showcasing how useful and amazing you are. <laughs> oh, stop it. You're making me blood. <laughs> So if you ask me, I think this is a huge move for OpenAI because it's giving us its best model with an upgrade for free and we get all those different features and all those different use cases that we'll be able to use it for. In fact, I believe that a lot of those AI startups right now will need to rethink their strategy because I think this model might take away their jobs. Like, I'm sure there's a lot of applications which are used specifically for translating live audio, like we saw in the demo just a second ago, and now GPT-4.0 will be able to do it straight away. So there is a lot to unpack. In the next video, we're going to be looking at uh, using GPT-4.0 and see if there's a bit of a difference between GPT-4. And we're also going to be looking at what happened at the Google I.O. event. So stay tuned for those two videos, and I'll see you in one of those two. Thank you very much. <laughs>